Welcome to our lecture online. And now we're going to continue with oxidation reduction reactions, also known as redox reactions. And let's take a look at the oxidation numbers in particular. So two things we need to remember. First of all, we can say that to derive the oxidation numbers, we simply assume that electrons are completely being transferred from one atom to another, from one ion to another. So in this case, we have sulfur, we have oxygen. And so what we're assuming is that the electrons will be completely transferred from the sulfur atom to the oxygen atoms. And that's the wrong number right here. Definitely that would be a very strange molecule indeed. It's actually sulfur dioxide we're dealing with. All right. Secondly, the numbers must be equal on both sides of the equation. So what we can do is we can label the oxidation numbers of the two reactants before they react. And so you can see sulfur has oxidation number zero and oxygen has oxidation number zero. So they're in their pretty well natural status, we can call it. You know, we find oxygen molecules in the atmosphere and we can find solid sulfur all over the place. Uh, and so if we separate it from all the other uh, atoms that they're normally with, when we find it in nature, we have sol uh, uh, pure uh, sulfur, pure oxygen, and so they have what we call oxidation number zero. In other words, they have the exact same number of electrons as they do protons in the nucleus. Then they react with each other, and the resulting product is sulfur dioxide, which is a gas that's usually a byproduct of pollution. Uh, when we burn a gasoline in cars, sometimes there's a little bit of sulfur in the gasoline, and so when we burn that off, we get sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere. It's a pollutant. And um, you can see that the oxidation number has increased from zero to four for the sulfur, which means that one sulfur atom has donated four electrons. Therefore, the oxidation number went from zero to four. There's, since sulfur is then bonded with two oxygen atoms, each of the oxygen atom has then received two of those four electrons. So each oxygen atom, the oxidation number now becomes minus two. Since, of course, there's two of them, 2 times minus 2 gives you minus 4, and the plus 4 and the minus 4 together gives you 0, which is equal to the oxidation number sum on the left side of the equation. So basically, when we want to look at the equation, we can say the oxida oxidation numbers on the left side are 0 plus 0, and that should equal the oxidation numbers on the right side, which is 1 times a positive 4 plus 2 times a negative 2, because we have two oxygen atoms, and notice that we have 0 equals 4 minus 4, or 0 equals 0, which means the oxidation numbers are equal on both sides of the equation, which is usually what we want. We want to make sure that the equation is therefore correct if the oxidation numbers add up on the left side, and they're equal to what they add up on the right side. Another thing to keep in mind, that sulfur is the atom that is being oxidized uh, the oxidation number therefore increases, and the oxygen is the um, uh, atom that's being reduced, and therefore the oxidation number actually decreases. So that's how you keep track of the two. So hopefully that helps you in understanding what oxidation numbers are. They're just simply a way to realize how the atoms react with each other and how electrons are transferred in a theoretical sense, not necessarily a practical sense, because in the true nature, when you see this, this particular molecule, the electrons are being shared to some extent. It's not 100% ionic, and so therefore it's not a complete uh, donation from one atom to the other. But in order to keep the oxidation number straight, that's the assumption that we take care.